what's up everyone my name is Biku and I'm here with a quick video just to show you how if you are one of the few people left still building custom 3d printers and you're not too sure how to set up a custom profile in the new Prusa slicer this is a quick video to show you how to do so so it is relatively simple you just need to go to configuration configuration wizard you won't get that pop up when you do it and then if you're building if you're setting this up for a completely custom 3d printer custom printer define a custom printer profile and then name it whatever you want to call it or just name this demo now the first thing you're going to want to choose your your firmware there's a very good chance that you're either going to be using using Marlin or Marlin 2 but you should have already set up your firmware in your controller board. Uh, we'll just go with Marlin Legacy as that's what I usually use. Next this is also pretty simple. Your shape is going to be determined by the shape of your bed. I would recommend actually measuring because sometimes your theoretical dimensions don't match up exactly to your actual dimensions. So it is relatively simple. Say your printer for some reason worked out to 212 millimeters by you know 198 it's useful to know these things so you're not guessing every single time next these are things that you're going to know as well what is your nozzle diameter you'll know what kind of nozzle that you put in it although this can be played with a little bit and then your filament dimension whether you're using three millimeter or 1.75 but you should know that next this is where things start to get interesting. Your extrusion temperature doesn't really matter here because this is going to be changed depending on what filament that you add and you're going to be adding custom filaments later as well unless you use official filaments. But for now we'll just leave it and then if you have a heated bed you're going to want to add in a temperature here so we'll call it 60 degrees for a heated bed. This you pretty much don't have to worry about since I found I usually add in my own filaments this is all just the Prusa Slicer stuff itself. You can opt in for all the stuff if you want. This doesn't matter. Now here what I would do is I would tick both of these because that will make it so that any 3MF file or STL file will automatically open in Prusa Slicer which you probably want. And then you can choose whether you want simple advanced or expert mode. I usually leave it on expert mode but you can choose whatever you want maybe I'll do a video later about the differences between all three of them and then finished but there's usually a couple things that I like to change so that was the simple setup there's things when you're building a custom 3d printer that a generic printer profile won't necessarily match up to because the thing I found here Prusa is very they are a little bit over the top with their nozzles they have a 0 0.3 as the standard layer height and 0 0.35 as the first layer height. Now doing a 0 0.35 mil layer on a 0 0.4 mil nozzle doesn't work out too well. So usually I keep my first layer as 0 0.3 and layers after that will either be between 0 0.15 and 0 0.3. So we'll just do 0 0.2 is my normal layer height. Now these settings here will pretty much all be print, print uh, will change depending on the print that you're doing. But one thing I will say, if you're building a new 3D printer, what I would do is here on your print speeds, when you're still busy learning just how fast you can actually push a new 3D printer, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use a 60 millimeters per second uh, print speed that's not crazy fast but it is also faster than you would like if you don't know the capabilities of your printer so if you really want to be conservative you know 20 or 30 is fine but I usually go around 40 to 45 just to start out with especially here for travel speed you know Prusa printers travel speed is very good yours might not be yours might bind up while you're busy testing and you need to figure these things out so usually I would just bump all these down to around 40 just while you're testing and then when you get more comfortable with the printer 
you can change these and try and print faster and everything like that. You can also, if you go under the expert options, you can set a max print speed if you really want to limit it so that nothing goes over. But I find if I usually set all those to around 40 and then everything that was low, keep it there, that's usually fine. Then I usually change this as well under the advanced tab. For some reason, Prusa sets their extrusion width to 0 0.45 by default. That probably works well on their printers and the nozzles that they use, but generally speaking, if I've got a 0.4 mil nozzle, I'll set it to 0.4 mils extrusion width. You can you can actually do all those settings, but for in my experience on a if you're just using generic nozzles or random nozzles, I'll put in the actual nozzle size and then adjust it later if I find that there's issues. Nothing really much else here matters. Next thing under filament, this will change depending on what filament you use, but whatever temperature your filament recommends at start off there and then going up or down depending on yours, depending on your experience with it. The last thing that I like to change is custom G code. Now this is where you can do some really cool things depending on your printer and also depending on your type of printer. So let's say for example this here is set up for a Prusa printer where um, it'll home and then it'll lift the nozzle while it waits for everything to get up to temperature and then it'll start to print. But now, say you wanted to do a nozzle wipe for some reason, you would have to work out where exactly your uh, nozzle wipe station is, but you can then type into G code. I'm not gonna go over the G code that you would need to do that because it's very specific to what you're doing, but you would type in the G code to do a nozzle wipe or whatever else you want to do. Also, I found on the printers that I build, I usually have threaded rod instead of lead screws. So five, 5,000, this is millimeters per minute, but 5,000 millimeters per minute is very fast for threaded rod. So I would dump, dump that down to usually about 250. And then going down to the bottom here, this is where I usually always add something here. So all my 3D printers have a heated bed, but you can see at the end of the G code, they only have M104 space S0. What that does is that turns off the bed temperature. You can see that's how you hear, or that turns off, this will turn off the nozzle temperature. But what it will not do is turn off the bed temperature. So what I usually do is add M140 S0. that will also turn off the bed temperature. It's very useful if you're curious and want to know all the cool things that you can do with G-code to look up the RepRap G-code. Um, it's almost like a dictionary. It'll tell you all the G-codes and what all they do. So I'll usually do that. And then also, depending on the type of printer, I've got one Cartesian printer and one Delta printer. Now on a Delta printer, when you're done with the print, you don't want to just home the X-axis. That's not going to work. A lot of Delta printers have it set that if you home any axis, it'll home all of them, but not all of them. So what I would usually do is get rid of that and just do G28. That'll do a home everything. So once you've done with all that, always save every change that you make so that it actually stays. And yeah, that is the basics of setting up Prusa Slicer for a custom-built 3D printer. Thank you so much for watching.